Okay, welcome everyone to the second talk of the session. We have uh, Kijun Lee talking about uh, building an ecosystem for indoor spatial information. Okay, thank you. All right, so this is a quite a long story, but I'm not quite sure whether I can make it within 20 minutes. But anyway, I will try that. All right, so we are, uh, this is a presentation about a project called INUS. INUS means uh, indoor, I forgot it. I name it, but I forgot it. <laughs> anyway, so we launched that project two years ago with uh, several other teams. And starting from the, the analysis, investigation of why indoor spatial services or technology is not yet booming up. So, we, so I have been working for indoor space uh, more than 10 years ago, like uh, 2007. So at the time, I believe that uh, indoor spatial services technology will be booming up very quickly within two years. But after 10 years, almost nothing happened. So why? What is the reason? So we, we started the project uh, by investigating the reason why there is a bottleneck of indoor spatial technology. So one of the reason is there is no stable indoor positioning system. So GPS is out there but not working in indoor space. And the second reason is the, the, the cost for building indoor map is quite expensive. As they explained, the first presentation gave a very nice uh, work about making the indoor map. But anyway, the cost is very expensive compared with outdoor space. And the, the next one is for outdoor space, we have a quite a, a very nice uh, the standard and uh, hold the process. Uh, sorry, uh, I have, okay, I have, the, okay, so I have stay here. All right, okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> anyway, so the, for outdoor space, there are some ecosystem around the uh, standard, but for indoor space, from the construction of data to uh, the, the managing and sharing and utilization application, there is no standard process for data production and sharing. And the final reason is there is no killer app. So the only thing that we are talking about in those space is indoor navigation. But this is a very, very tiny portion of indoor spatial technology. So we have to uh, solve, we have to find some uh, solution for each problem except the first one because indoor positioning is, I'm working for the database, I'm the database guy, but indoor positioning is nothing to do with the database. So I tried, I decided to forget about indoor positioning. I tried to use the, 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 the existing indoor positioning method, but try to solve the, 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 five, the four solutions. Okay, so based on this observation, uh, we decide to set up an ecosystem from uh, building an indoor, indoor map and managing it, sharing it, and developing uh, some application for indoor space, more than a simple indoor navigation. So we started the project two years ago, and the name it as INUS, INUS Indoor Outdoor Spatial Data Services, and occasionally, and uh, no, so INUS means it is also a name of a butterfly only in Australia. So we decide the logo like that way. So, so I paid a lot for designing this logo. <laughs> anyway, so this is the goal and the scope of the project, starting from the indoor map construction. So there are many teams working for that. So this is a group one. And group two is, oh, sorry. Where is the pointer? Oh, sorry. Whoop. OK. So group two is, after we have the indoor map, then we uh, manage and process it for uh, complement the data. And then after that, once we have the full data set of indoor space, then we can make a useful application. So these are the main goal and scope of the project. And this is group one, group two, and group three. And we decide to set up an ecosystem of indoor, indoor space, indoor map in indoor GML, which is OGC standard. Actually, I'm working as a chair of indoor GML in OGC. Okay, so this explains the whole process. 
This explains the whole process of our project. Uh, group two, uh, group one, we collect the data from the point cloud like uh, stationary LiDAR or backpack LiDAR or even a Tango like uh, the very personalized device. This is one pillar. And the second approach is from the simple uh, the floor plan, of image floor plan. But this is quite useful. So when I talked with some guys in Hong Kong or Singapore, because they have a lot of old buildings where they don't have any CAD data. So the only data that they have is floor plan. So we have to sometimes start from the floor plan. So we vectorize using deep learning, then and the extrusion to 3D, then we get a 3D solid data. Then we convert it to semantic model because in GML it is not only geometry model, it is but also semantic model. So we include a lot of semantic information to, uh, to, to this data. And then finally, we get the indoor GML. Then after that, uh, once we have indoor GML data, we may apply it to several applications. But because this is uh, the, the project funded by uh, government, so we try to find some solution for public. The first one is, of course, the indoor safety, like indoor emergency response. And the second one is the voice indoor map for visually impaired person. And, uh, we try to make a service like an open stream map for indoor version. We call it indoor, uh, open indoor map. So these are three main applications that we are developing as a, a group three. All right, this explains the indoor map production, but I will skip it. I will explain it. Anyway, so these are the left side is the, the methodology, and the right one is the, the approach that we are working for uh, for this project. So first one is uh, we try to make uh, uh, indoor, data, indoor map data use, uh, from the point cloud collected by SLAM and like uh, the open stream map or uh, the floor plan map, we can uh, get indoor, indoor data. All right, so I would like to explain it from the, so this is not the, okay. So this is a, uh, team one of group one. That means it's once we have the input of a floor plan image map, then we try to build the, the geometry from that one is a 2D, then in, we extrude to 3D, and if possible, we need some kind of a manual work. So this is something, and I'd like to show that we develop, or oh, is my mouse? All right, okay. I'm sorry that it is a Korean version of Josem. Josem is a, uh, OpenStreetMap editor, Java-based OpenStreetMap data. Anyway, we load the, the image map like that. <coughs> then we, so for, for the time being, we don't have any very nice tool to remove the, the some uh, information which is not really needed by our system. But so anyway, we remove the, the some noise data, then we try to build by using uh, deep learning. And then uh, we can make it and we match with the, the, the indoor, open indoor, open stream map. All right, then we do some other additional edit. And finally, we make, all right. Okay, anyway, so by doing so, we can make uh, indoor GML data. And the second approach is uh, point cloud as the, the previous presentation. So we collect the data from point cloud, but what we are doing, what we do, what we have done is we classify the data into two categories. First one is architectural component. That means the wall and ceiling and floor. And then, and the other cl class is the non-architectural component like chairs and so on. So we can do that by using uh, several types of method. And then we converted it to indoor GML for non-navigable space or navigable space. These are the indoor GML terminology. So these are the process. So I will show the, uh, the whole process. Okay. So from the SLAM, SLAM robot. So these are the SLAM that we developed by by one team of our research initiative. 
And then we get the point cloud data. So it is quite a complicated point cloud data. Then we remove the noisy data. We have a lot of noise because of the uh, transparent glass or reflexive floor and so on. So it is inevitable. So we collect the data and we apply almost the same methodology, but except point net. We conclude that point net is not that good. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so we apply RANSEC and other type of uh, the deep learning. So finally, we get the geometry and with some image data, image texture data. Then even we have the geometry, but we found that there are some missing, missing things. So we have to edit it in manual way. So this is a process of manual way. And sometimes when the door is blocked, door is locked, then we cannot enter into the room. So we have to draw by by. Okay, where is the, all right, so I can, sorry. So, uh, okay, so I'm sorry that uh, there is some problem. All right, then by doing, by this one, we can show the final result. Okay, I will skip it because it is it takes time. We don't have enough Oh, where is my slide? All right, we get it. Okay, then the group 2, we process uh, the data that we get from the group 1 and in addition to the data from group 1, we uh, the convert data from a beam model, IFC data, and CAD data, because IFC contains a lot of uh, semantic information. So we, we, we convert it to IndoGML. And then we define the data model, and we, we edit, we include some of the meaningful data, like topology data, or POI, or sensor data. Then finally, we can get uh, a very nice uh, indoor GML data. And then uh, after that, we utilize the data for the application. One is uh, open indoor map. So open indoor map is a uh, uh, application developed on, the, it's a kind of geo portal uh, developed on the top of uh, cesium. So we convert it to the data to F4D, but that, that GLTF of native uh, cesium format because GLTF is very nice for outdoor, but it takes a lot, a lot of time for visualizing for indoor space. Anyway, so we develop some other format. So we, we, we display it using indoor map. And then we can uh, uh, also, the, for the application, we sometimes we need a route computation, not only for the empty space, but also when we have a, some, something like an obstacle here, we have to consider this one, particularly for fire brigade, they have to consider the obstacle. So we try to find the optimal route using uh, considering this uh, obstacle as well. And, uh, the, the next application is uh, fire response, but I'd like to show, uh, I'm sorry. How many minutes I have? Okay, so this is a very interesting application of the indoor GML that we have. Uh, we have that uh, indoor GML data, then uh, using a tool called the FDS, the fire uh, dynamic simulation, which is developed by NIST. Uh, we can simulate the expansion of fire and smoke. And the, 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 the red dot, it means uh, the, the persons. So persons try to escape in case of fire. So we, there are many models of the movement of the crowd. So initially, before the case of fire, we count the number of persons of each room. But after fire, uh, because of the, 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 the block of the internet and so on, we don't know exactly, so we, we have to make some simulation to estimate the number of person of each time. So by doing so, we, the fire brigade, the firefighter can estimate how many persons are there for each room. So this is very important information for firefighter. But unfortunately, these are some casualty. <laughs> 
And the next one is, uh, uh, as I said, this is uh, uh, the indoor voice map for visually impaired person. This is a smartphone-based uh, indoor voice map. If you have a smartphone like Android, they, the Android or iOS, they provide a called the voice assistant user interface. So we call voiceover for iOS and talkback for Android. But normally, the visually impaired person they use, they prefer iOS talkback. Anyway, using the, based on the interface of talkback, uh, we provide the instruction, uh, turn by turn instruction, so based on indoor map. So this is the second, the, the last application that I show for this talk. Okay, so INUS project is a project uh, for five years ending at the 2021, so we aim to set up an ecosystem around IndoGML. And, uh, yep. So if you are interested in the working together with me, please contact with me. So we have a lot of flexibility of our project. So, okay. So, and uh, you may find a lot of, so th these solutions are mostly open source software. So you can find the software on the GitHub of our lab, which is here, right? Okay, that's all. Thank you. I kept the time limit. Yeah, you're right under. All right, okay. Any questions? Yeah. I just <clears throat> got a question for the, the indoor mobile navigation. Up. I guess it's for indoor mobile navigation? For yes, application. For the blind people? Yes. All right. Uh -huh. So how can you okay. Yeah, that is a very important question. So, uh, uh, can you just the sorry. Can you repeat the so his question is how we can get the the, the position in indoor space. So for outdoor space, we have a GPS. This is a dominant technology for almost everywhere. But indoor space, it is not the case. So in, as you know, GPS is not working in indoor space. So there are many methods. The first one is geomagnetic sensor. Geomagnetic sensor is a very nice tool because we uh, only rely on the geomagnetic uh, the signals, so we don't need any infrastructure. And the second one is Wi-Fi signal. We have a lot of APs, so this is the second option. Third one is uh, uh, UWB ultra wide band. Ultra wide band gives a very precise location, but it is quite expensive so far. And the next one is uh, uh, the, the light-based solution answer. There are uh, numerous ways. And uh, the final one is uh, called PDR, pedestrian uh, dead reckoning. That means if we know the location of, suppose that I turn just turn left, then suppose that I know that location, that by, by counting the number of steps, I can estimate my location. So this is the, so but, I would like to say that it is, first, it is hybrid. No one single method work for every case. And the second, it should be case by case. We suppose that, for example, this place, uh, I, I believe that geomagnetic sensor work very well. But if you go underground, like uh, the subway, there are a power line of high voltage, it disturbs the, the geomagnetic field. So it doesn't work. So it depends. So, uh, so if you have uh, the area that you want to apply the indoor positioning, you have to go there and you have to test every method to see what is the best solution. And yeah, I'd like to mention one another, which is a beacon. So uh, for example, uh, iBeacon from Apple or Edison, these are two types of beacon which are working very well. Okay, any, any other question? Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.